Hello everyone, and welcome to Translating CAD Files. In this lesson, we will learn how to take CAD files we might get from an artist and learn how we can effectively and efficiently work with them in a 3D application such as Maya or After Effects. So let's take a look at some of the issues and how we can solve them. Before we begin, remember, may the horse be with you. So let's open Maya and drag in our unicycle CAD model. Some issues that exist when importing CAD models are inverted normals. Now let's take a look at this object right here. If we zoom in, we can scroll down in our outliner and see we have many surfaces, but look at here, surface 50. Now if I go into my channel box, this one surface, look at all the shapes that make up that surface. We can right click, maybe go to surface patch, and we can see all the individual parts, all the individual shapes that make up that one surface. Now Maya does have a quick tool if we go to modify convert, we can see here that we can convert NURBS to poly. Right? And we can get something like this. Or we can experiment with the options. Maybe we just want quads. Because if we selected all of these, watch what, watch what would happen if we selected all of these and hit convert. That's going to take a very long time because it's going to convert every single one, not of these surfaces, but each surface shape inside of all of these surfaces. And it's going to take a while. And you'll see, look how many polygons it created. 1,476. And yeah, we can group them. We can hide. And okay, now we have our model here. And it might look great, but not really and so it just takes a whole lot of time to do this so that's why we have to make sure the horse is with us so let's continue on a route that'll allow us to figure out a good way that we could bring in some good cad models and to export them as an object file so that we can animate them texture them in a very efficient way okay so i'm just gonna delete that and we're going to go to an app called Moment of Inspiration. Moment of Inspiration is a 3D modeling app for designers and artists that allow us to work with CAD NURBS models and even create our own. While I don't understand how to use the application for this, I will say that we will use it to export and import models. So here's the app, it's just a regular 3D app, uh, and we can just import our unicycle. Great, now looking at our unicycle, here's our objects. We just have one object here that imported. But now all that we're gonna do is go to save, and we're gonna export this as an object file. You can see the different file formats that we can export, so there's FBX, but we're going to go to object file. I'm just going to call this CAD file. Now immediately what you'll see is this dialog box popping up saying meshing options. We can play with the slider which affects our angle. That's a lot fewer. But look here in this upper right hand corner. 11,000 poly count and 30,000 point count. So we get a poly count and a point count. That's great. Maybe we want it more smoother, so we can increase up to more polygons. Now, a good number that I've found works for me in almost every situation is four. Five, four, and three. Five if I'm like, well, I don't want too many. Four if I just want right. And three if I want extreme detail. And of course, you can go even higher, but really, who wants a unicycle with 600,000 polygons? So I'll just make it four, that'll come down to three, or maybe even five, and we can get around 200,000 polys. Not bad, I'll hit okay. Great, now when we export, we get our object file and our MTL for material. And that was from what we got from our step file. So now let's open up 
the CAD in Maya and see how that differs from our original unicycle. Now, upon import, we can see that the model is gigantic. And that's because of the axis information and scaling we get out of our translating app. But I made a script here, especially to correct this. And all I need to do is select any of all, any or all of my models and just run the script. And what that'll do is put everything right back in the center, exactly how we want it. Now I'm going to turn on our NURBS model. So this original one was the step file, the original step file. And this one was our object file import. It looks nice. I will say it looks really nice. But right away we can see some issues here. In this translating process, some of the normals are reversed. So let's figure out, so let's see some ways that we can edit and solve this problem. And I'm going to work with the seat. Now when doing this process, I found that the easiest way to select objects, especially if it's only one object, is going into the UVs. So as you can see, we can select our UV shells. We can do that by right clicking, go to UV, UV shell, and now we can select each of our individual shells. This makes it easier when selecting objects because I can just select this group and then maybe unselect this part and now I have the seat selected very easily. Now I made a script that allows me to just detach, separate, and then delete history, common commands. And when I do that, what it does is it breaks them apart. I'll unselect that and then just combine the remaining into the seat so that now we get our two objects here, we got the seat and the base. So we can see we can break things up pretty easily. But now what about the seat? Let's isolate just the seat. In some cases, you're just gonna have to experiment. But as far as this normals issue is concerned, if we toggle on the normal display and the vertex display, you can see some of them are on the inside and some of them are on the outside. Black, gray, right? Your normal display is all strange. If I turn on the vertex on the face, I get two different colors. I get green, I get yellow. That's just a sign that something is wrong. So we're gonna spend some time in mesh display. Now for an issue like this, there's two buttons that we can mess with, unlock normals and soften hard edges. So what we can do first is we can select everything hit unlock normals. Now that'll turn our model into this, but that's why we hit soften it. And now it's back. Now the reason why we did that is so we can go into UV shell and reverse all of our normals just like that. But let's take a few steps back. Now, if we didn't do that and we just selected the UV shell, and we hit reverse, it reversed the normals, but the display is not correct. I can reverse, but nothing happens. That's why we need to select and go to unlock normals, because they were locked, and then soften the edges. Now, if we go to UV shell, I can select, and reverse. And I'm just hitting G to repeat the command. One of the issues are, is that our vertices are not merged. What does merging the vertices do? Well, if I select this UV shell, you can see I can pull it apart. It's not part of the other objects. Although it is one object, now if we got this object and we separated it, it would separate into all of its UV shells. But let's just say we wanted these to be together as one. And then what we can do 
is we can do the merge vertices. What merge vertices did is combined it into one See, I can still access the UV shells, but just now the UVs, but now the vertices are merged. In a good idea, select all and then hit merge. Again, it's just about experimenting with your model. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at a better example. I have this other file. It's a CAD file. Okay, this is just a device and a case. And if we go to our objects, we can see we can turn them on and off. But for now, let's just export just this one. We'll do it at the same method as before. And we'll get these settings just like before. Again, I like my sweet spot of four. You can see the edges around here came out very nice. And now we'll go back into Maya and import our CAD file. My script allows me to easily position and look. Look at how good that looks. Ooh, nice. It looks really good and no issues. We can even triangulate if we wanted to by going up to mesh triangulate and it triangulates really nice. But I don't want to triangulate. I want to go and see the UVs. I like to do this just to see how my objects are. Well, obviously these UVs need some fix. Let me undo this a couple times. We can go into the UV again and see some of our shells. You know, maybe we want to extract the screen. Okay, so I could use my extract separate. Here we go. Now I got my two objects. All right, I got my screen. Let's see, you know, maybe I want to separate. Maybe we can do that from the side here. It's easier to do it when you have the UV shells. Okay, now I can uh, do the same thing, separate, detach. Maybe I could combine them again into one. And do you see how the editing process goes? It's really easy to do it like this. You saw when I got this and I broke it apart. Do you remember what happened? I got all these polygons. That's because if I go to the vertices, you can see that the vertices, they're not together. They're separate and they're laying on top of each other. So one way we can fix that is selecting them all and just go to merge vertices. That can be found inside edit mesh merge, but I just have it here on a button. Now, if I went here, now you can see they're together. And if I went here to the UV editor, create automatic UVs, you see we got a better UV layout. Same thing if I went to here and just went to automatic, we get a better UV layout. Select everything, put everything back to zero. I can even break apart these buttons if I wanted to. Now look at all that. Oh, that is a mess. Why do you think that is? Again, if I combine, we'll isolate that. We'll select all the vertices. We'll get our options box up. Now this value is gonna have to be pretty small in order for the merge to work. 09. And now if we just do a separate, you see it just separates into its individual objects. Good, and that's what we wanted. Now we can just address our hierarchy a little bit. 
maybe delete some history and there we can again add some UVs such as this button isn't really UV that good if we went to layout I mean we'll get that but I'd rather go to automatic so that I can get a good UV layout like that but I don't know why you would want to UV the buttons you'd probably want to UV the screen which that's what we did we can just select this UV uh, shell right and we can just position it in the middle if we wanted to uh, mess with our UVs, yeah. So that's basically how to do it um, for any model. It's just that process of figuring out what the best ways are. That Moment of Inspiration app is a really good app. I like it a lot. So I hope you learned something. Uh, certainly there's a lot of different ways to approach this. As far as experimenting, I found that this way works very well for me. Now, what's great about this is now I have this model and it's I could use it in Element 3D. I could use it in any of the other applications. So again, let's just do a quick review. We have our CAD step file. We open up our CAD in Moment of Inspiration. We export out an object file and from that object file we were able to open it up in Maya and now we have a good piece of geometry we can go to mesh triangulate and we still get a nice smooth clean mesh it's beautiful and I'm just gonna save this CAD file and there you have it we went from a step file to an object file, and now we can import it into Maya, and we can even export it as an FBX if we need to export. Great, so I hope you learned something. Thank you very much.